Hey guys, what's happening? So, today is a sad day. I was just kidding. It's actually not really sad, but I think I'm going to retire the printer bot here. Um, yeah, actually this was my first 3D printer. I mean, I've had it for probably eight years. I mean, I've probably printed at least 10,000 parts. It's kind of the printer that I started all for me, the whole obsession. You know, for going eight years straight now at least of just, you know, non-stop 3D printing. Building 3D printers. It kind of started, started my obsession with CNC machining. You know, because of that, you know, I, I wanted to get into like machining, the, the CNC lathe, mill, router, that lathe back there. So it all kind of started from this one little printer right here. And it's actually kind of a funny story how I got it. Um, my first experience with 3D printing was actually fixing a 3D printer. So my buddy had bought this a long, long time ago. And he was actually having issues with it. The firmware got corrupted. And they originally ran like an Atmel 8-bit uh, board. It was called a printer board. And actually, I still have the board, too. It's, yeah, here's the original board. So, yeah, it was an 8-bit 8 board. Um, yeah, it didn't have a lot of storage. Not very much flash on the, on the processor. Um, but, yeah, this printer was it was kind of ahead of its time. You know, this is back when 3D printers were basically all like plywood. Like the first Ultimakers, the first uh, printer bots, they were all plywood. They were like laser-cut plywood. Um... But this was like one of the first ones I saw that was actually all metal. And this was called the uh, PrinterBot Simple Metal. Um, but it's a cool little printer, man. It, it printed great. Um, I've actually had several different motherboards in this thing over the years. Uh, I originally had the, the printer board. And then when I went to a MKS Gen L, which was another 8-bit board. Then I went to an SKR 1.1 board. Then an SKR 1.3 board. Then an SKR 1.4 board, and then my last board in here is a uh, SKR Pico. Flip that over so you can see it. I mean, I've been making videos about this thing the whole time I've actually had it, but this thing has been so rock solid, reliable. Uh, I, used to, I, used to, I used to take this printer up to my cabin, and I would actually be up there in the middle of winter time, you know, snowing outside, snow everywhere blazing fireplace and I'd just be by myself just learning 3D printing. It's like the, the mechanical the mechanics of a 3D printing. It was just it was fascinating to me. It was it was it was incredible that you could do this create this small little CNC machine in your house and just run it on a computer. So like back then, I mean you actually had the thing actually had to run on a computer. So you actually had to have a computer or laptop connected to it uh, to run it. I mean the G code actually ran off the actual computer itself. Um, and then for after that, for, for many, many years, I had, uh, it was running Octoprint. So, I think it's been Clipper for probably two years, maybe, three years. It's been Clipper for a while now. But, yes, yeah, so I ran Octoprint for many, many years. I mean, I don't, I mean, at least 10,000 prints or more. This thing, for, this thing like, was basically was printing 24-7 for probably five years straight. I mean, this actually, this small printer, all the, the, that small printer printed all the parts for the, the Orca here. All these were printed on the printer bot. So I was able actually I was able to make a better, bigger printer on the little printer bot. I mean over the years I've I've also had like ANET E10s. I've had I've had, had other printers, right? But the only printer I really ever kept was this printer because it was so cool. I mean you have this mechanical action, it goes back and forth. It was it's it's different than any other printer I've seen. Um I mean I haven't seen one like similar to this since so um, yeah, they went out of business like a long time ago, probably four or five years ago by now. But they were way ahead of their time. They actually had, uh, this is obviously a, a BMG style extruder, but even like they, they were the first company they ever saw that came out with a dual drive where it grabbed the film on both sides. I mean, it wasn't like gear, it wasn't gear reduction, but it was, it was dual drive. But it originally had this massive stepper motor on the, on the top here. Like this, one of these original, actually all the stepper motors except for the extruder are original. A big fat, like probably 48 millimeter or bigger, separate motor. Um, yeah, I'm running a V6 hot end on it, but it's I really haven't even touched this thing for years. And I mean, I just printed on something on this thing a couple days ago. So I don't know. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to keep this thing forever, just because it's where it all started. So um, I think I'm just going to put it maybe up there on my shelf up there. 
so I can kind of still see it and I can still use it. I'm not going to take it apart. It's really the only flat glass printer I have. And if you want like a mirror-like finish on your, on your part, if you want it to be perfectly smooth like mirror-like, I mean, there's nothing better than hairspray and a flat glass. Like the mirror, mirror finish is, is incredible. Like you don't get that sort of finish with like uh, any of these PE, PEI sheets, so. Um, yeah, I just, I need my, uh, my workbench. I need more space for my workbench here. And so I'm finally finishing up my uh, Kitty Tech printer. And what's funny is the same guy that gave me this printer gave me that printer too. So the same sort of things, it was actually the printer was having issues and he just didn't want to deal with it anymore, so, so he gave it to me. But yeah, I went through this, I've been a whole video series about this, this thing right here. You know, upgrading thing to Clipper, redoing everything, full enclosing the machine, you know, adding a five inch touch screen, all that stuff. But, all right, because I know I've actually, uh, several people that have actually owned these printer bots are subscribed to my channel. They always ask me questions about this. Um, but this thing's actually so old, I'm actually running a Raspberry Pi 2. Yeah, no Wi Fi, that's why you have the, the, the LAN cable here. But, Cool, cool printer. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of this thing. You know, I think I'm going to clean this thing up as a sign of respect. Um, because I, I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to use This thing has saved my butt so many times, this printer. Like when all my other printers have failed, this one has always worked. So I haven't cleaned this thing up forever. So it just runs and runs and runs. Yeah, I mean, these are the original bearings. I do lube them from occasionally, but... I mean, look at even even the lead screw. It wasn't even a lead screw; it was just a regular like. Um, well, it's, it's a lead screw, but it's not like your typical like what, eight millimeter one. I forget like four, four star eight millimeter, I think. Um, put on my compressor. Yeah, I know that dirt coming off, but I forgot how hard this old hairspray is to get off. So um, yeah, it's so sticky. But actually, that's why I never took the cover off the, the LCD. Just because I didn't want to get covered in uh, this hairspray. So, yeah, it's covered all here. Just, I mean, I might not be able to get it all off, but I'll just get a lot off it off. So, actually, I might even heat it up, actually. Scrape it off? Not sure. Well, I didn't want to use this thing and put it, you know, what, what's the saying? Um, use it too hard and put it away wet. But, um, so I kind of wanted to put this thing sort of like in mothballs, the same way you would do with a ship. I got kind of as clean as I could probably, probably get it, you know, without going super crazy on it. Um, yeah, it's hard to get that, uh, what's it called, that, that hairspray off there. Alright, there it is. You know, I have a feeling I'm probably going to bring that down again and use it at some point because it would just, it would, it would give you such a nice, perfect mirror finish. Um, so sometimes you want a mirror finish, mainly like when I was doing like LCD, the, the front of like an LCD cover, cover or panel. I could have a have like a like perfect flat mirror finish. Um, but yeah, hairspray is a headache, but alright, so yeah, I had a lot of people comment on that printer, the printer bot, and people that actually had the printer bots. But um, yeah, that was, that's a cool printer, man. I love it. I'm never gonna get rid of that thing. Um, like I said, all this in my garage now is all is all because of that one little printer. <laughs> it's like a eight-year-long addiction. Alright guys, cool.